Chapter 5.5 lesson on trigonometric identities. This is um, a section that a lot of students have trouble with. I think primarily because you don't spend enough time kind of playing around with it. Trig identities are a lot of fun. Now I know you're going to say no, no, math isn't fun. But trig identities, when you figure out it's like a little puzzle, you want to prove that something is equal to the other side, it becomes a bit of a game and get to like it because in grade 12 advanced functions there's much more complicated trigonometric identities to work with. So we're going to start with the basic building tools and that's over here on the right side where I have drawn um, a Pythagorean relationship with x, y, and r and these trig rate relationships that we've talked about already in another section where if this was theta you could talk about sine as being y over r, cos is x over r, and tan, tan as y over x. So we're going to use these little building blocks to prove a couple of identities to begin with. Now the first time you prove these using x, y's, and r's is just to prove that these exist. Once you have done that once, it's highly unlikely that you're going to be asked to use x, y, and r to prove these again. When you get to a unit test, the teacher will ask you to prove an identity, but generally they don't ask it for in terms of X, Y, and R. And I'll show you what we do with those as we get into um, some other examples. So if I wanted to prove that sine theta over cos theta was equal to tan theta, the first thing you need to do is decide which of these is the more difficult. So more complex would be this side here, right? Sine theta over cos theta. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by describing the left-hand side as being sine theta over cos theta, and we're going to replace it with these relationships. Now remember, this is just to prove that this identity exists. Once we've done that, you won't be using these again. So on the left side, if sine theta is y over r, that means I have y over r, divided by cos theta, which is x over r. And if you recall how to divide fractions, and again, I know for some of you this is uh, something that you had some difficulty with even in elementary school. When you're dividing, you invert and multiply. So that means that I have y over r times r over x. And you can see once we have it in this format that these r's will cancel out and I'm left with y over x, which just happens to be tan theta. So the right side is equal to y over x, and we say left side equals right side. So that's your final proof. You've proven that this is true. So that's a really basic trigonometric identity that you need to know, that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. You'll use that an awful lot. Now looking at the second one here, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. When you're doing identities that add to something, and on this side is just one little thing, normally you have to somehow combine these together to make a 1, right? So let's start with the left side, and we're going to replace sine squared theta by this, y over r, but we're going to square it, right? So I have y squared over r squared plus cos squared theta would be x squared over r squared. And if I want to continue this now, I've got, I've got my two things adding together. I have the same denominator. And in the numerator, I would have well, let's just switch them around. I'm going to say x squared plus y squared over r squared. And we've already shown with this identity here that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So that's the same as r squared over r squared, which is also equal to 1. So the right side is equal to 1, and left side again is equal to the right side. So once you've proven this identity, and you may be asked to show how you get to it, but once you have that, you have this as an identity that you can use in more complicated questions. Now, 
if we rearrange this equation, we can get a couple of other identities out of this, right? Because we can switch that um, sine squared theta would be 1 minus cos squared theta, or cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. And those would be the additional identities that you can get from what we call the Pythagorean identities. So sine squared theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta, and cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Now you have to have the squares with them. You can't just say 1 minus cos and is equal to sine. It's not the same thing, right? So here we have two more very important identities that you will use a lot. So sometimes you might have a 1, you're going to have to replace it by this, or you'll have um, sine squared that you might replace by 1 minus cos squared, or cos squared replaced by 1 minus sine squared. So we're trying to prove an equation is an identity so that both sides will be equal to each other. That's the identity. Is this equal to that? Now, sometimes in the older textbooks, they used to ask, is this an identity? Which was a little more confusing because you might work really hard and find out that it isn't. But generally in the grade 11 book, they just say, prove the following tr trigonometric identities. So we've got our three uh, Pythagorean identities that we can change uh, from this format into these two. And you also have a couple of others and we will prove, um, let's prove one of them anyway. So let's say we've got one, one of them is one plus tan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. So I'm going to start with my left side. Now remember the other identities um, that you already have learned is that cos, uh, cosecant theta is 1 over sine theta and secant theta is 1 over cos theta and cotan theta is equal to, now that would be the reverse of tan, so cotan is 1 over tan theta. So these, um, these three reciprocal identities, you did those before and you would also have to say that sine theta, cos theta, tan theta are not equal to zero in the description because you can't divide by zero. So let's go back over to this one plus tan squared theta being equal to secant squared theta. So when you're working with identities, your goal is to put these into the smallest pieces. And the smallest pieces in this case are sines and cosines. Those are your basic building blocks. So tan squared theta would be, we've got it here, sine theta over cos theta, but this time it's squared. So the squared just goes beside the function, not after the angle. Okay, so this is tan squared of theta. So it means, this means the very same thing as tan theta quantity squared. Okay, these are identical equal terms. Okay, so I have 1 plus tan squared theta is going to be sine squared theta over cos squared theta. So that's my left side. And my right side, secant squared theta, that's 1 over cos squared theta. Okay, so as you're working with the identities, it's always a good idea to look from one side to the other to see where you're trying to get to. So this being the simplest, I want to end up with one term, 1 over cos squared theta. And when I look over here, I have two terms. I have 1 plus this. So to make it into one little term, I need to find a common denominator so that I can add these together. And often you, you need to find common denominators and add things together to squish them up to this thing, right? So the 1, I can rewrite that as cos squared theta over cos squared theta, right? That's 1. And to that, I'm adding a sine squared theta over cos squared theta. So when you 
look at what's in your numerator here, that's the same thing as this identity here, right? Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. I highly recommend that you spend some time memorizing a couple of these, these ones in particular. Okay, once you've got those, it's really easy to write these ones out. So here, when I write this out, I have cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, and I know that is equal to 1. So I can write it this way if that makes you feel a little happier, because that's the way it was in the original equation. And then I can replace this by 1. So that's 1 over cos squared theta. And now I can say that my left side is equal to the right side. So that's another identity. Now you don't have to really memorize that. You could prove it any time, I'm sure, now that you've seen it once. And there's also one more that says 1 plus cotan, and maybe you want to try this on your, your own, 1 plus cotan squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. So how would you start that? Well, the same way as we did this one, only cotangent squared theta is going to be this one flipped over. So I would have cos squared theta over sine squared theta. I would have to find a common denominator, just like I did with the last one. And you'll easily see that that's going to be equal to secant squared theta. So those are all the main trig um, identities that you need to use to help find uh, the little pieces to make the other ones. That's all you're going to be doing. So let's see if we can find something that's a little harder from your homework exercise. And I'm going to flip this over here for you. I'm going to do one more and then maybe in the next video I'll do some of the homework questions. If you have any specific ones that you would like me to do, um, feel free to put a little note below. So this question you're asked to prove that tan theta is equal to sine theta plus sine squared theta over cos theta times 1 plus sine theta. Okay, so there's your question. So what you want to do is work with the side that is most complicated, and that of course would be this side. So the left side, I can write it in its most basic building blocks, tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. Okay, so we're going to leave that one and go over to the right side. So we, we have a few um, identities. We could replace sine squared theta by 1 minus cos squared theta, but that's not really going to get us anywhere. So we might want to take a look at seeing if there's something you can factor. And factoring is also a big part of identities. So there you go. Once again, factoring, if you didn't learn it well, you're going to be in trouble. So I pull out a sine theta out of each of these, and look what I get in the top. Oh, and I have one of those in the bottom. How handy is that? So I have cos theta times 1 plus sine theta. And I can cancel these two. And look, my left side is equal to the right side. So as you can see, they're, they're fun, right? That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> of course it was. Now, so what we're going to do is, um, let me do one more, just so that you have uh, another example. And again, if there's something you want some help with, make sure that you ask below, and I will be happy to, to give you a complete solution for it. Okay, so this says cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. Now, if you take a look at this, you might know from your factoring skills that this is really 1 minus sine squared theta, right? It's a difference of squares. If you didn't recognize that, let's say the left side is cos squared theta. I'm going to leave that, or cos squared x in this case. And the right side, I'm going to expand it. So I have 1 plus sine x, 1 plus sine x, minus sine x, minus sine squared x. And if you were good with your factoring skills, you could have gone right to this line. So 1 minus sine squared theta, or sine squared x, and you should recognize 
that that was one of the identities that we developed on this page here, that cos squared theta was 1 minus sine squared theta. They've just replaced the theta with an x. And so 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cos squared x. Sorry, I keep saying theta. Okay, so left side equals right side. And some teachers might get you to write Q, E, D at the end of it, which means quad erratus demonstratum, which means therefore it has been proven. And that's your lesson for today. Please leave any comments or questions you have below and I'd be happy to help you out.